G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in that last video I did, I showed you how to pour your own aluminium round stock at home uh, using a cylinder and it easily separates and this is a good example of what you can get when you do it that way. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. I haven't bought any aluminium for 20 years because it's so damn expensive in Australia and uh, this does me as far as hobby work. That's the sort of cross-section you can generally get and I've done a lot of work with home cast aluminium and yeah, uh, I'll give you some examples of what it's good for. This current little flame liquor is a good example of home cast aluminium. You can see there that barrel is cast on and machined. It's not polished, it's just turned. And we've got a, a little flywheel on the other side, once again, just turned, not polished. It'll polish up quite well with wet and dry if you want to go that way. I don't bother, but uh, I quite like the, the matte finish myself. And of course, what it's really good for is making gears, and that's where I started on this whole casting thing, making lathe change gears. And here's some examples of home cast gear blanks and home cut gears. This one here has been going for at least 20 years. This lathe gets a lot of use. I made this 28 tooth one just the other day, you would have seen a video on that. And this reverse tumbler gear up here, that's aluminium as well. And yeah, aluminium will do the job and home cast aluminium is as strong as any bought stuff that you would get. Uh, the only thing that you might get, you could get some pinhole imperfections in it. It, it varies, it depends. Once you get your, uh, your pouring system and your process sorted out, well then you'll get better and better at it. Overall, I generally get good results. Not very often do I get any flaws in it, really. Here's some more home car stuff. It's uh, something I when I with the fly cutter, and as you can see, there's no porosity, there's no problem whatsoever with that. Here's some more, where I've just machined the end of it. And that looks good too. The critical thing is you use good quality aluminium. I always use the best I can get uh, scrap wise and currently I'm using uh, aluminium car wheel rims, melted down, cut them up and melt them down. I'm using Toyota ones at the moment and uh, works good. You can see on that there's a little bit of porosity there near the outside and you can see the way that's poured it's nowhere in as ne near as neat a job as this last pour that I did in that video. And that makes a difference. You'll find that that roughness can go through um, from the outside in a ways. In the centre you've got no problem but uh, you might have to machine in a little bit just to get past that roughness of the porosity on the outside. But once again, as you've got it for nothing, it costs you nothing. If you waste a bit, well, too bad, you know. And if you do get a really dud piece, you just remelt it and do it, do it again. It's as simple as that. So, how good's this bit? I mean, I had a a request from a viewer to show how good it is when I machine it. So I reckon this would be good. It looks terrific. It certainly looks the business. So I'll face it off and we'll see what it's like under the skin where it counts. Okay, let's do it. Right, this piece is 55 millimetres diameter. Weighs a bit. If you went and bought that in the shop, that would cost you big bucks. But it cost me nothing except a little bit of gas. 
from the LPG similar in a bit of time. So now we'll put it in the big scroll chuck. I'll face off the end and then I'll machine along the sides as well and we should get a pretty fair idea of how good this is quality wise. So, yep, let's do it. We'll go on to medium feed. Once again, this is where a quick change gearbox is to go. Four hundred and sixty-four RPM. Fine feed now, and then we'll come back, have another pass. So here's the result. That was with fine feed, that's with medium feed using carbide tip. That was dry, that was with the kerosene and oil engine oil mix. You can see the quality is excellent. You know, you've just barely gone in under the surface too, so that's a pretty good result. So this gives you a good idea of the sort of quality you can easily get with home cast aluminium. That's the finish after I hit it with the shear tool. We'll come in close on that for you. That's the sort of quality you can get. And I mean that's just under the surface as you can see. So this was a great pour. I knew that from the beginning. And that's what you can get guys. You just have to, you know, get your act together on it. Get your temperature right when you pour it. Get everything preheated. And as I said, yep, no degasser, no flux, but good quality aluminium, you're good to go. So there it is, the finished uh, product. The final result. And you've got to say, that's uh, damn near as good as bought stuff. You couldn't ask for any better than that. And that's about as good as you're going to get from my uh, experience. But as you can see, it's no fluke. I've done it before, done it plenty of times, and this is exactly what you can get once you get your system sorted out. So just uh, have a go. You can save a fortune in, in aluminium, 
And, uh, yeah, it's not difficult. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Got something out of it. We'll see you next time. Cheers.